Okay, um, what I'm going to do here is take you through the brake adjustment procedure with a cat um, for these uh, 2.5 ton or what are popularly known as 2.5 ton Rockwell axles um, that are on the deuce and a half. And what you'll need is probably a flashlight, a one and an eighth inch wrench, a one and a, or a half inch wrench, and an 11 sixteenths and then a 10 and 20 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. If you don't have those, if you bust a razor blade, you'll find it's about 13, 14 thousandths of an inch thick. And if you're fairly talented as, you know, a machinist or mechanic, you'll make do with this. So anyway, here's basically what you do to adjust the brakes. So you have a pair of brake drums, wheel cylinder on top. So to start things off, you rotate the drum around, I think in the tech manual it calls this the 5 o'clock position. And using your window opening there, right, or your thing, stick it in there. And then what you'll do, if you need to, is you'll loosen the lock nut with the 1 and an eighth inch wrench. And then you use the half inch wrench to adjust the eccentric until your ten thousandths of an inch or razor blade, if that's what you're using, just touches and then you'll tighten the nut, right? You'll hold the eccentric with the half inch wrench and then tighten with the one and an eighth inch wrench, right? It'll lock it down and then you'll come around here and double check it and make sure that your adjustment didn't move or your eccentric didn't move and the adjustment held. And then what you do is you rotate your inspection window right up here to about the like one, two o'clock position and you do the same thing. Right? Use your feeler gauge there and you adjust the nut on the back. Same kind of thing to get it dialed in. And then what you do is you repeat the same process on the other side, adjusting the bottom eccentric first, then you adjust the top eccentric second, right? Just like you did on this side. And then you should be able to turn the drum, have absolutely no binding, absolutely no noise or squeaking. So then, the fine adjustment, and where most of the magic happens, and this is the process you'll follow if the wheels are on the truck and you can't get to the inspection cover also. But you need to do a small brake adjustment. And basically what you do is you move this top nut out just a tiny bit, or you do it until you hear a little bit of binding or you get some engagement of the drum or the, the friction material on the drum. And then what you do, and so for both sides, tightening is going out, loosening is going in. So what I do then is come back and progressively move the wrench just a tiny bit while rotating the drum. You must go at least a full turn before determining that it's not engaged. And I keep going until I get pure silence again. And there it is. You're adjusted. All you got to do is put your inspection window back on, get the truck back on the ground. Um, another thing I didn't mention is, this is all easier because I just had to replace the whole axle um, because I had a differential failure. It's a lot easier to do this adjustment, right, and really fine tune it if the truck's up like this and or if the drive axle is pulled so that you can freely turn it. If that's not the case, if you support the both sides of the axle, get both wheels off the ground, you can either allow the differential right, to move, that would require all four wheels probably to be off the ground, um, or if, again, you know, if the whole axle is supported and off the ground, then one axle will turn one direction and one will turn the other. And there you have it. Um, that's how to adjust the brakes. It's pretty straightforward. And then, you know, like I said, after the wheels are back on the truck and you've been running it a while and things wear, you're going to have to make a little bit of a fine tuning. And then you just, again, just adjust, adjust the top eccentrics and you should be good to go. Um, you also should always do both sides the same way. I think there's a lot of value also if you're doing an event like this, 
I'm going to take every wheel off the truck and I'm going to totally readjust the brakes and make sure they're 100% dialed in um, before putting her back on the road. So, you're probably curious also as to the differential failure issue. And so here it is, it's bolted back in. Everything's not fully tightened yet, but um, getting there. But I'll take you over and show you why I had to go through all this. As you can see, sorry about the sun, it's just a part of the day. But it happened to this axle was all four spider gears had massively failed and chewed up both side gears. Maybe not in that order, maybe a side gear tooth broke first. Who knows? But you can see there's a pile of hamburger there that used to be spider gears. Um, there's no trace of a whole um, spider gear left whatsoever. You can see the pile of metal shavings. Maybe because of the sun, apologize. Um, in there, but this differential definitely didn't make it. So there it is.